animated dream. Johnny was lost in the glory of nature on a winter's day. No, no, he was really lost. On an outing with his Boy Scout troop, he had wandered from the trail, and now he was very alone and very cold. It had been hours since he'd heard another voice. As it began to grow dark, he carved out a place in the snow beneath a tree. He piled green boughs of evergreen all around him, and soon he fell asleep. But was it sleep, or was it the cold draining the life force from his weary body? This he wondered as he drifted off. Soon, he was dreaming. Dreaming of all things of claymation people, like in those TV shows that always seem to pop up during the holidays. Rudolph the Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, crap like that. Except these animated clay figures were like no others he had seen on those shows. Here he was dreaming of Adolf Hitler, Mahatma Gandhi, Charlie Chaplin, Mother Teresa, Wyatt Earp, and Helen Keller. They all stood in a circle around him where he slept beneath the tree. Hitler kicked him in the leg to wake him up. Get up, you weakling! Do you want to die out here? Get up and take over the world, you fool! Hitler's mustache, made out of black clay, looked like an undulating woolly caterpillar crawling across his face. His eyes were little balls of clay that wiggled when his head moved as he talked. Johnny wished his hallucination had been produced by Tim Burton. These clay creatures were really poorly made. Johnny sat up and said, I'm dying here, Mr. Hitler. It's cold as hell. Unless you've got a blowtorch in your pocket, I won't be leaving these woods anytime soon. Hitler sneered, a poorly animated sneer. A black, clay-clad, tall, thin, Wyatt Earp stepped forward from the half-circle. His wide-brim cowboy hat was a quivering clay mass. It moved almost as much as he did. He's right, son, offered Earp. You need to get moving before you freeze solid in this cold. It's colder out here than a whore's heart. Johnny asked, Mr. Earp, do you have any idea who this guy is? Earp replied, Well, based upon the depth of your imagination, which is my source for existence, and that from which I spring, as I understand it, he was a very bad man. Johnny said, Shoot him dead, Mr. Earp. Wyatt thought about this for a moment, the clay crow's feet around his eyes vibrating. He just stood there, quivering, quietly. His clay eyelids gave a confused blink. Then he drew his long, barreled, black clay revolver from his holster and leveled it at the sneering clay Hitler. He clicked back the clay hammer. Wait, said the clay Gandhi. Violence is never an acceptable answer to anything, including violence. Johnny looked at Mahatma. Gandhi was a thin ochre clay formation. His head was a big bald lump of clay upon which sat a pair of wire glasses. He was clay naked except for an oversized white clay diaper. Why isn't your flesh blue clay by now, Mr. Gandhi? Aren't you freezing your butt off? Gandhi thought for a moment and then replied, No, my butt is still in place. I am but a thought process to you anyway, so I feel no cold. Besides, Maya, Maya, all is Maya. What's Maya? asked Johnny. An old concept from my homeland that says life is an illusion, and therefore we are illusions as well. Johnny laughed. Well, my illusory self is freezing its illusory ass off. A silent and pale-faced Charlie Chaplin twirled his cane in the cold, icy air. He was already dressed in a ragged, cold costume as part of his silver screen persona. Fingerless gloves on flesh-colored clay fingers. When he breathed out, strange ice cube-looking blue chunks hung in the air for a moment before they fell, tinkling to the ground. What? asked Johnny. Chaplin smiled and tipped his ratty black derby. His mustache moved jerkily back and forth in answer. Then Charlie pulled two very stale dinner rolls from his pocket. He produced two forks and shoved them into the rolls. 
What he made looked vaguely like spindly legs with goofy-looking feet on them. He began to make the objects look like they were dancing, lifting up one and motioning it to the right, and then putting it back down and repeating the process with the other to the left. All the while moving his head in time to a song that no one else could hear. Great, said Johnny. I have conjured up the silent film star Chaplin, not the interesting political and intellectual one. Chaplin stopped his dinner roll dance, a shocked and hurt look upon his pale clay face. He frowned. He raised one of his claymation fingerless gloved hands and flipped Johnny the bird. He wobbled off, cane in hand, to lean against a tree trunk, his back to Johnny. He was sulking. Johnny laughed. He turned now to see Mother Teresa holding the hand of Helen Keller. She scooped up a little bit of snow, placed it in Helen's hand, and with big animated mouth movements said, Snow, S-N-O-W, all the while moving her fingers in Helen's hand. Helen seemed to be looking at something in the sky with open, pale, blue, clay, sightless eyeballs. Johnny looked up but couldn't see anything but the sky. This Helen Keller was the Patty Duke miracle worker version, kind of cute. Her big brown clay hair moved like Medusa's snakes on her head as she moved it slowly back and forth in questioning concentration. And even though her mouth was open, it might as well have been closed, for no sound came out. Teresa turned to Johnny and smiled. The white clay shroud-like thing on her head moved poorly. It was supposed to approximate cloth. Well, it was really lumpy cloth. Mother Teresa looked like the Gandhi figure in the face, or perhaps an apple doll. He had no idea if her body was as spindly as Mahatma's, but he doubted it. Her form was described visually by white clay with thin blue stripes of clay on the edge. She spoke, We are made of clay. God formed us from the earth. From dust we come, and to dust we return. What's that got to do with the price of tea in China? asked Johnny. What you say sounds a lot like the Kabbalah legend of the Golem I read about. A beast made of clay it was dead until the rabbi wrote the Hebrew word for life on its forehead. Then it moved and wreaked havoc on the world. That's all we are, huh? A bad folk tale? No answer. Johnny thought for a moment. I think I read somewhere you had a big crisis of faith in the last half of your life, right? Asked Johnny. You weren't even sure God existed. The Mother Teresa claymation figure bowed her head, nodded it slightly, and a few tears made out of the same materials as the ice cubes of Charlie Chaplin's frozen breath fell to the ground. It was clear blue and kind of plastic looking. They also made a tinkling bell sound as they fell into the snow. Jesus, said Johnny. Don't cry, it was just a question. At the use of the first name of Christ in such a declarative manner, Mother Teresa looked Johnny squarely in the eye with her light, brown, clay, quivering lips frowning severely. Uh, sorry, said Johnny. Helen Keller turned her back on them all. She looked as if she was listening to a sound that came from the distance. Behind her, the clear blue sky framed by the tall pine trees seemed to stretch forever. She smiled a big claymation smile. As she bent down and grabbed a handful of snow and washed her face in it, one of the fingers on her left hand fell off. Careful, Miss Keller, said Johnny. In this hallucination of mine, that's real snow. You're just made out of clay and it doesn't do well in the cold. Hitler began throwing a tantrum, stamping his feet and shouting. Suddenly, white clay smoke, mushroom-shaped lumps exploded from White Earp's gun. He finally shot Hitler. Red clay flowers seemed to sprout from the dark uniform that Hitler wore. The dictator fell to the ground, motionless as, well, as a lump of clay in the snow. Wyatt Earp spoke as the animated smoke cleared, shaking his lumpy black clay cowboy-hatted head as he said, I didn't want to go to the crowds that day. Doc said we had to or the town wouldn't respect us. So we went and all hell broke loose. Damn that town. Damn us. We were damned. I've been nothing but a killer ever since. Mr. Earp, I don't know about the OK Corral, but Hitler needed killing. He was evil. You did good, said Johnny. Earp shook his head and his tall clay form seemed to slump. 
He put the gun to his own head and pulled the trigger. More red clay clumps flying everywhere. Johnny was thankful he was not hallucinating about the Kennedy assassination. That would have been a lot of red clay. Ert fell across the Hitler clay figure on the ground. Gandhi said, this is madness, and shivered, but not from the cold. The Helen Keller figure was absolutely oblivious to all things happening around her, except for the snow, the cold crisp air, and the now floating smell of clay gunpowder burning. Johnny thought he heard voices coming towards him, but not hallucinatory voices, actual voices from the real waking world nearing him where he still lay asleep in the snow. Great, he thought. I'm going to be rescued after all. He looked around him. All of the clay characters were gone. They were all in his head. He lay down to prepare to wake up and be rescued in the real world. Shivering, he thought to himself as he drifted off, I'll never watch another crappy stop-action animated film again. <laughs>